You talk about Eric Albarracin and what he did 4-0 as far as fighters in the UFC in 2019. Uh, Cejudo, double champ. Patricio Pitbull, double champ. Paulo Costa doing his thing. Korean Zombie, who he linked up with. Jordan Johnson making it uh, to the finals. A tremendous year for him, and he has been uh, he has been campaigning. Henry Cejudo campaigning, texting me all morning long. Uh, Safe Saud, a phenomenal year, 19 and five in the UFC. Jeff Neal doing amazing. Stephen Peterson with the the the, the spinning back fist, doing great things with the likes of Uriah Hall, of course, as well. But what about the year that Eugene Behrman had? City kickboxing 11 and 1 in the UFC, and most notably getting the the title for the middleweight division with Israel Desanya, and of course Alexander Volkanovsky, who also spends time with a great coach named Joe Lopez in in Australia as well. Huge year for that team, and beginning of 2018, they didn't have a single fighter in the UFC. Like I said, 11 and 1. Other notable fighters that compete for them: Brad Riddell and Kai Car France, Dan Hooker. In the end, I had to debate this. I was debating it all month long. I was debating it up until this morning in the end I go with Eugene Behrman of City Kickboxing a phenomenal year for the man who has led that team now to two titles we've got Israel Adesanya the middleweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky and like I said uh, not just those guys you've got a list of other guys doing great things they ended the year 11 and 1 in the UFC and the lone loss was Kaikar France on the final pay-per-view of the year. They could have gone undefeated. And I got to tell you, I was, my stomach was in knots over this one. This was a really tough one. It was an absolute tough one. And I know Eric is going to be mad at me, Captain Eric. Listen, if we would have talked about this in June, he had that one in the bag. He had it in the bag with Pitbull doing his thing, winning the second belt with Henry Cejudo doing his thing, winning the two titles, beating TJ Dillashaw in January, and then doing his thing against Marlon Moraes and winning that 135-pound title in June in Chicago. But the back end of the year was all about city kickboxing. Israel Adesanya beating Anderson Silva, the win over Kelvin Gaslam, and then knocking out Robert Whitaker at UFC 243 in Melbourne in front of all those, those fans. Highest attended event in UFC history. Alexander Volkanovsky beating Jose Aldo beating Max Holloway, doing what he did against him. I mean, just absolutely amazing. And developing, like, Hooker ended last year. Remember, he ended 2018 with that loss to Edson Barbosa. Very one-sided. People were saying it should have been stopped earlier. Came back and look at the year that he had. Look at the, the, the Brad Riddell fight. Look at the Dan Hooker fight, as I just mentioned. Look at the, the, the Kai Kara France. Look, look how far Kai Kara France has gone. You know, if he would have won that fight back in December, would have been talked about as one of the top contenders. And there is a, a list of guys who are coming up from that gym in Auckland, New Zealand as well. He has put that team on the map. Um, I've seen some other fighters now start to talk about wanting to go train with Eugene Behrman and the team over there in Auckland, in New Zealand. They have done an amazing job. And in the end, you can really flip a coin um, I, 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 I feel like the two finalists have to be Behrman or Albarracin, if only because they want titles. And at the end of the day, uh, the titles help put you over the edge. If you're telling me right now that you're going with Captain Eric, it's hard for me to argue against him. It really is because of what he did. But I felt like Cejudo only fighting twice and, and the Pitbull wins weren't quite as impactful as what Israel did and then what... Alexander Volkanovsky did, and then what all the other fighters did as well. And so without further ado, let us say hello to Eugene Behrman, who I know is not one to, uh, to, to, to like the limelight and to campaign for these sorts of things. In fact, he's probably annoyed that I've asked him to be on the show today to accept this award, but I appreciate him doing it nonetheless. Eugene, how are you? Congratulations on a phenomenal year for you and the team. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Ariel. Uh, I'm not sure if I deserve such an award, which is why I'm immediately going to pass my award on to the real deserving people, which is the team. Because as you as you know, I don't coach everybody by myself. I have a I have what I think is the, one of the best teams of team of coaches in the world. So uh, I might be receiving the award, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, that award goes equally to all of the coaches and the fighters that I train. So respect to you. That's why I'm on the show. Ash, um, me and Ash really respect what you do, so uh, thank you very much. 
Uh, I appreciate it, and I and I appreciate you saying that about the team as well. Um, I like asking this question when we when we do the the award shows. Um, did you foresee this kind of year for you guys? I mean, it seemed like Israel was on a, a rocket ship, but you know, to, to end the year the way you did, almost undefeated with the two titles. If we would have talked this time last year, did you think that you would be in this spot after what happened in 2019? Were you expecting this kind of year for the team? I expected this to take a little longer than it happened, but uh, as it as it as it happened, like the the freight train started up and it couldn't be stopped, so. We, we we didn't try and halter it. We just kept going with it. So I definitely was unexpected to reach these heights this early, for sure. Is there a particular moment from this past year? It maybe uh, isn't one of the fights or one of the victories. Maybe it's a moment backstage with one of your fighters. When you think back on 2019, when you're going to be an old man with your grandchildren telling them about this incredible year, is there a moment that you think that will stick out for you? Uh, for me, uh, the big one is uh, in the fifth round of the Gaston fight when uh, you know I, I had to lean into his razier and tell him like this is everything we've worked for for all the years we've known each other. Every bit of blood, sweat, and tears we put into it is going to come down to this last round. And it wasn't in that many words; it was in far less of words. But we both um, just had a, had that understanding that you know this is this is it like this this is, has to be even, all or nothing. That was that was probably the, a moment that stands out. I can pick one. And what a great round that was. In fact, that, that fifth round was my round of the year, and, and we'll see uh, if it ends up being my, my okay. fight of the year as well. It was incre I mean, just legendary stuff, of course, with Izzy saying that he's willing to die in there. Just very powerful and, and memorable stuff. Um, as, as you look ahead to 2020, do you, are you the kind of guy who has goals? Like, do you, do you write these things down? Do you want to be in a certain spot by the end of, of this year as well? Do you, do you think of things that way, or do you just take it day by day, month by month? My goals are tied up with my fighters' goals, so they will have goals. Um, obviously, um, yeah, I, I, the, the big goal is to keep in our winning roles, winning ways and retain our title. Um, I think maybe a personal goal of mine is to do a little less media, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I got, I got shoved into a lot of media, and uh, I, I just think that, like, I, I, I've been a fighter. I had my time in the limelight. I... I that was my time to shine, and now it's the fighter's time to shine. So, like, I, I'm old school. Like, I think coaches, the only time a coach should be seen is when they're cornering their fighter. So, I don't know, maybe that's just a little personal goal. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. But, yeah, that's just the only clear goal I've got next year, maybe. Perhaps that's uh, one of the negative byproducts of all the success, at least in, in, in your view. Uh, can I ask you one last thing? A lot of people wondering when we're going to see Israel back. Will it be in March against Joe Romero? Can you tell us anything about this? We're working on getting a deal done in March to fight your Romero. And we are training right now. We are in full training camp for that fight. Okay, but it's not a done deal just yet. <clears throat> it's not a done deal. There's some uh, small particulars, as you know, that have to be worked out. But um, well, we're, we're, we're staying positive. We expect, uh, we expect to be fighting another, uh, another murder. We expect to be walking down murderers row again. Uh, come much. All right. Well, we look forward to that. Uh, congratulations once again, Eugene. We'll keep this one short. Uh, it's all about the award. It's all about the year that you and your team and your fighters had. Uh, it's it's been amazing watching what your team has done over the past year, and we're we're, we're thinking that uh, bigger things are to come. That that this isn't a flash in the pan. That this isn't a, a one-off for you guys. So I'm really looking forward to what you guys do this year and beyond. Thank you for doing the show. I know you don't love doing this stuff, but we really appreciate your time. Thank you, definitely, Ariel. A respect to you and your team. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.